Peristaltic pumps are one of those things I seem to find myself coming back to time and time again. While I've made quite a few different pump designs over the years, they've all been of the relatively low flow rate variety. Enter my first high flow peristaltic pump. It has two separate flow channels, each of which capable of flowing up to five liters per minute. This build started when I decided I wanted to up my game on my isopropyl recycling for my resin printers, and that's gonna require circulating IPA back and forth between these five gallon buckets, and that calls for something with a much higher flow rate than any of my previous builds could offer. The two channels will allow me to have the system run in a loop, continuously flowing from the UV settling container on this side over to the filtration container on that side and back. And because it's a peristaltic pump, the IPA never has to leave the contained system, reducing the risk of this flame-loving fluid from finding its way to electronics. Why the hell did I make myself say that sentence? Now did I need to flow two liters a minute to accomplish this? Uh, probably not. But now it can. So, you know. Plus, with a larger volume, if I don't need the flow rate, I can just run it slower and extend the life of the tubes, hopefully. If you aren't familiar with peristaltic pumps, they work like extruding toothpaste out of a tube. Moving the squeeze point along the tube pushes the fluid through the tube. This is often done by putting a series of roller bearings around a wheel and using those to squeeze the static tubing against a static wall, just like I did for this previous build. But I wanted to try a little tweak on this concept for the high flow pump. Instead of using the outer diameter of the bearings as the contact points, I wanted to run a shaft through the inner diameters of the bearings and use these shafts as the contacts. This lets the inward force from the tubing balance each other around the bearing, keeping the load into the bearing to just the radial load that it's designed for. But what about all this stuff over here? Well, let's crack it open and take a look. Getting the tubing out of the way first, then loosening the six M3 fasteners that go around the perimeter of the pump, I can then take off the housing and expose the main bearing, which is made up of all these 3 8 inch steel balls in a 3D printed V-groove race. And being held in this rotor are three beefy roller bearings with our contact posts running through them. Picking up the rotor, carefully, exposes a mirror set of these balls that form the other side of the main bearing. And look, it spins! Putting it back together, we can see that the tubing enters the housing through these openings and sits within these tracks on either side. I designed it for use with 12 millimeter or about a half inch outer diameter tubing that has a one millimeter thick wall. But it can also be used with smaller tubes that have the same wall thickness. Or by swapping out the contact posts, it can be used with thinner walls as well. To drive it, the hubs have these lobes that engage the rotor right around the roller bearings, and I've made a few different hubs, including this one that allows me to drive it with a socket wrench. Using this adapter, I tossed a torque wrench on it, and found that it takes about three newton meters, or about two foot pounds, to turn the rotor. Um, yeah, that's a bit high, although not a huge surprise given all the friction caused by squeezing such a large diameter of tubing. And although it's high, uh, this should be well within the torque available for my drill, and that's good enough for me for now. Speaking of, let's throw the drill on it and see how it does. Unsurprisingly, the drill has no real trouble spinning the thing faster than I'd feel comfortable standing next to. And although my plan for now is to just drive it with the drill, I couldn't help myself on trying to strap a motor on it. So I tossed together this printed planetary gear set that gives me a 4 to 1 gear reduction. I would have preferred something closer to a 10 to 1 since the motor I had on hand has a no load speed of around 3500 RPM. but. I would have needed a larger redesign of the pump to fit the larger gear set, so 4 to 1 it is for now. Unfortunately, this means it doesn't quite have enough torque to overcome the static friction, but after a little help to get things going, it worked pretty well. I used this little tachometer to measure the RPMs, and it maintained 200 RPM at about 18 volts, but while drawing an undesirably high 9 amps of current, running at 200 gave me a flow rate of a little more than 2 liters per minute, not quite a fire hose, but I'll take it. While I was pleasantly surprised at the performance of my quickly assembled gearbox, I don't like that current draw, so for my needs right now, I'll stick with the trusty drill. I also find it kind of handy that I can just pop a wrench on it and manually run the pump. I found myself using that, uh, feature? A couple of times during my playing with it, or I mean, uh, during testing. One of the main issues I've run into has been with the fasteners through the contact posts backing themselves out. Luckily, despite some of the awful noises it made when this happens, it surprisingly didn't actually break anything. I added these features here to the post to give them some geometric resistance to rotation. Between that and a little bit of thread lock, they then held up just fine. Although in a word of warning on my last video, it was pointed out that this may not have been a great choice. It's on my to-do list to look into this some more, but in the meantime, consider yourself warned. Thanks again, Mike. I have some thoughts on a more robust fix for that, but as with gearing, it calls for a larger redesign. And I think instead of iterating this design further, I may instead combine this high flow pump design with this planetary pump concept I've also been tinkering with. 
But that's a build for another day. My drill powered pump checks all the boxes for my current needs. So I'm gonna call this one here for now. I'll throw links to the build details and printed part files below. And if you wanna see that follow up build and or if you have any ideas to toss in the mix for it, let me know in the comments. And a huge thanks to those who voted for this video to be next on deck. You'd be surprised how much that kind of thing helps motivate. Thanks for watching and hope you're building something fun.